In an effort to address overcrowding in California's prisons and assist in alleviating the state's financial crisis, the Public Safety Realignment Act was signed into law on April 4, 2011 and took effect on October 1, 2011. Realignment made some of the largest and pivotal changes to the criminal justice system in California. Realignment transferred the responsibility of supervision to the 58 counties for felons released from prison whose commitment offenses are statutorily defined as non-serious or non-violent. Offenders convicted after October 1, 2011 who have no current or prior statutorily defined serious, violent, or sex offending convictions are to serve time locally with the possibility of community supervision at the place of time spent in custody. Realignment established the post-release community supervision classification. It altered the parole revocation process with more responsibility in local jurisdictions, gave local law enforcement the freedom to manage offenders in a more cost-effective manner, and charged the Community Corrections Partnership with planning and implementing realignment in their community. As of July 1, 2013, parole violators are housed, prosecuted, and tried locally. This legislation created an unprecedented opportunity for all 58 California counties to determine an appropriate level of supervision and services to address both the needs and the risks of individuals released from prison and local jails into the community. Hello, my name is Steve Sentman, Chief Probation Officer for the County of Orange. I also serve as the Chairman of the Community Corrections Partnership. The United States Supreme Court ordered California to reduce the number of inmates in prison by May 24, 2013. AB 109 signed into law April 2011 to be implemented by October 1, 2011. Beginning October 1, 2011, counties assumed new responsibilities of supervision, custody, and treatment of the post-release community supervision non-non-non populations. Public Safety Realignment, also known as AB 109, established a community corrections partnership and an executive membership that is responsible for building, adopting, and submitting a realignment plan, including recommendations for supervision, custody, and treatment. AB 109 is intended to ease the overcrowding at state corrections facilities. AB 109 shifts responsibility to the counties for low-level offenders released from prison or offenders sentenced under new guidelines. This is not a new population, but a shift in supervision, custody, and treatment of offenders locally. There have been successes with realignment. In the County of Orange, we have truly enhanced our collaboration with all impacted county and local law enforcement agencies and initial reports are showing that recidivism rates have been improved. There are some challenges though. Analysis of impacts on the county resources, probation, sheriff, district attorney, public defender, local law enforcement, mental health and courts, shift of supervision, custody, treatment and court processes have all been impacted. And there also have been concerns on the level of funding, resources needed, the housing of offenders, and the unknown impacts on counties and cities. The implementation strategies that have been formed by the Community Corrections Partnership have been to propose strategies to effectively supervise, house, and treat offenders while monitoring the impacts that will be outlined the Probation Department supervision, the Sheriff's Department for custody, the District Attorney for prosecution, the Public Defender for defense, the courts, and health care for treatment. Continued analysis of impacts and gathering of data on all agencies will need to occur as current predictions and funding allocations may not cover the actual cost of handling this realignment population. Proposed outcomes, 
the realignment plan will seek to achieve the following outcomes. An implementation of a streamlined and efficient system for the County of Orange to manage our additional responsibilities under realignment. Implementation of a system that protects public safety and utilizes best practices in recidivism reduction. The probation department plays an integral part in the local supervision, treatment, and rehabilitation of offenders. By addressing criminal behavior at the front end of the system through community-based programming and evidence-based supervision practices, public safety outcomes can be improved while also lowering offender recidivism. An adequately funded and appropriately resourced probation department can provide vital public safety services while achieving better outcomes and making our communities safer. Building sustainable pro-social life skills while addressing substance abuse issues, ultimately breaking that cycle that keeps offenders in the system for reducing recidivism will be the goal for the probation department as well as the Community Corrections Partnership. On behalf of the Community Corrections Partnership, I'd like to thank those involved for putting today's summit together, and most importantly, to thank all stakeholders that came today to participate in this event. Hi, I'm Sheriff Sandra Hutchins. When AB 109 started to be discussed, um, I think every member of the justice system had different concerns, and I, I can speak for the sheriffs. Our concerns were initially, are we going to have bed space for these additional uh, prisoners that uh, formerly would have gone to state prison but now are a local county responsibility? So once we got past that, we were lucky here in Orange County. We did have some jail bed space. We have also been lucky we've been awarded two pots of monies to build additional infrastructure, uh, to build additional jail capacity for the county. So I think the county will be well suited for the future. What we're focusing on now are the programming and to reduce recidivism. So if you understand what occurred in the past uh, under the state correction system uh, and in the county system as well, um, inmates would be released um, you may have done some programming in the jail, uh, GED testing, domestic violence training, substance abuse, but once they got out of jail, there was no service on the outside. There was no connectivity to uh, a program that would keep them along the right path. That's what we are doing now. We call it a wraparound service, where we actually, when the inmate comes into custody, we do an assessment, kind of like a counselor would do at school, see what kinds of training uh, they need, what kind of counseling they need, and then work with our partners on the outside um, to provide those services, be it the faith-based community or nonprofits, to make sure that the uh, individual gets the services they need uh, to put them on the right path. And the goal here is to reduce the jail population, which reduces the cost to taxpayers, and make this individual um, you know, a part of society uh, that is not coming back through that revolving door that costs us a lot of money. Provide them with the job training services, uh, maybe even um, get them with an employer. Uh, and so that is what we're focusing on now in, in terms of AB 109. We've gotten past the initial um, concerns about the numbers uh, and the monies. Um, we'd still like to see a little additional money, but you have to work with what you have. And so uh, where we're at now is we're trying to reduce recidivism. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tony Rakakis, Orange County District Attorney, and uh, I'm glad to be here uh, and to address this summit. So the realignment has uh, had quite an impact on, on our department, that is the, uh, the District Attorney's Office. In particular, we're doing a lot more hearings uh, than, than we expected to. You know, we anticipated uh, that there would be uh, a certain number of uh, parole hearings and and other kinds of hearings connected with uh, with realignment we've kind of gone off the chart in terms of what we have so we have uh, six uh, deputy DA's who are um, fully engaged in in handling uh, parole hearings and uh, probation hearings and uh, and hearings for uh, uh, people on post-release supervision uh, who have various conditions and and uh, and you know the violation hearings that we're that we're having they're not necessarily long there really are a lot of them so now I understand that our caseload is getting up to 200 cases a day uh, just in handling uh, all of those hearings that are directly the result of of uh, realignment so that's one thing but additionally we have uh, an increased number of trials because uh, and that is felony trials and the reason for that seems to be that uh, since a lot of cases uh, 
the person can't go to prison anymore. That is, you know, the, those uh, 1170H cases or the non-non-nons, as, as we call them. Well, there's no prison. They can only go to county jail. And the judges are really not happy or not inclined to send somebody to county jail for multiple years, like five, six, seven, eight years. Uh, so the sentences are much less than they had been in the past. And so uh, there isn't much of an incentive for these people to, uh, to plead guilty. They just as soon go to trial. So we have more trials now. So in addition to those uh, six people I mentioned, we have to have, we've had to put additional people on the uh, felony panel. So we have a whole additional team on the felony panel just trying uh, just trying cases. So our trials are up and, and those hearings are up. You know, there was one court that was going to be handling all of those uh, parole and probation violation hearings and uh, so it, it looks like that particular court is not going to be able to do it. Like I say, calendar being uh, up to 200 cases a day, um, you know, it's just too much work for, for one court and the deputies in that one court. So it's a lot of extra work for us. You know, we're hopeful that, uh, uh, that we're not going to see a, a great deal of, uh, of recidivism. It's a little early for us to tell right now, but the hope is that uh, we're not going to be seeing these people come back uh, over and over again. And I think our probation department's doing a pretty good job, a real good job, and health care agency's doing a good job, and, uh, and maybe that will somehow uh, prevent the, uh, this, uh, all this recidivism that we're hoping doesn't happen. That's what the summit is all about, and we need your ideas, and uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to working on, on uh, getting the ideas and implementing the, the best ones so that uh, it'll, it'll just be good for all of us. Hi, I'm Kevin Rainey. I'm the chief of police with the Garden Grove Police Department. And I also am the uh, municipal chief representative on the Orange County uh, Community Correction Partnership Board. As we all know, realignment uh, is probably the biggest fundamental shift in the California criminal justice system uh, in the last, uh, I, I say 40 years, but I've heard estimates up to 100 years. In, in any case, uh, on October 1st, 2011, uh, with the changes that realignment brought uh, to all the participants in Orange County, it re it's really taken a collaborative effort uh, on behalf of the Sheriff's Department, Municipal Law Enforcement, the District Attorney's Office, the Public Defender's Office, and the health care agency, and uh, probably most significantly the Orange County Probation Department, to work collaboratively uh, to best manage uh, this new population that's uh, basically been thrust upon us by the courts. And so in, in looking back, uh, when realignment uh, was implemented again in 2011, all of the agencies involved were still dealing with the throes of the 2008 recession. Uh, staffing in all of our respective uh, agencies and departments were probably at a historical low and now we have this new population uh, that we have to deal with. It took a lot of work. Uh, that work is still occurring, actually. But I'm happy to say now, three years into it, uh, I'm very pleased with the success that the Orange County uh, law enforcement community is having, uh, dealing with the population of realignment. The probation department certainly has been successful in gearing up uh, and staffing uh, to deal with a, a more sophisticated client. We have uh, probation officers assigned to the Garden Grove Police Department and those probation officers team up with uh, one officer that I have assigned ex exclusively uh, to manage the realignment population in Garden Grove. And uh, the collaboration, uh, I think, speaks uh, greatly of uh, just the cooperative effort that we've all experienced in Orange County throughout the decades. We have the fourth largest percentage of uh, realignment offenders living in Garden Grove. And I'm happy to say that uh, as the chief of police for the city, I'm very happy uh, with the, uh, the program that we've uh, adopted and the fact that the realignment population, although still residing in Garden Grove, really hasn't uh, significantly contributed uh, to an increase in calls for so service or our crime rate. And I think that was the biggest uh, fear uh, in 2011, was that uh, a lot of people, myself included, were concerned that the uh, crime rate was certainly going to increase. And I'm happy to say that at least in Garden Grove, our crime rate has actually decreased uh, by almost 20% over the last two years. And I'm not saying that uh, it's because uh, of, of success that the police departments had or it's indicative of the uh, collaborative effort dealing specifically with the realignment population. But uh, it does uh, speak well that uh, at least in Orange County and Garden Grove specifically, we're not seeing significant spikes in, in the crime rate. Um, moving forward, it's still going to take a lot of work. Uh, the impact uh, that's having on the Sheriff's Department is significant. Uh, we have a, a much more sophisticated population of inmate 
uh, now being incarcerated in, in the Orange County Jail. And you also have people being sentenced now with the, uh, the new split sentencing guidelines created by AB 109 that rather than being incarcerated for a year, anecdotally I've heard that there's an inmate at Orange County Jail that's been sentenced now by the court to 18 years in the, in the custody of the, of the jail. So the impact has been significant, uh, but at the same time, uh, all your law enforcement uh, community leaders uh, in this county are working together to make sure that collaboratively uh, we're managing this population and providing the resources to make sure that uh, recidivism uh, continues to stay lower than it did at the state level when this population uh, was uh, supervised by the uh, Department of Corrections. Hi, I'm Carlos Rojas, the police chief for the city of Santa Ana. I'm here to talk to you about post-release community supervision and mandatory supervision. Do you know who's being released into your community? That's a question that we often get asked in law enforcement. And we have a great opportunity with early release to make sure that we know who is coming into our communities as law enforcement officers. And our goal in working in a task force environment along with county agencies is to ensure officer safety, reduce recidivism, and hopefully decrease crime. It is important for all the agencies to work together and to really focus and make a commitment to added resources to this important task. Our goal is to make sure that the resources are available for those re-entering the community and also take swift and decisive action in the event that we have individuals who decide to break the law. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sharon Petrosino. I'm Chief Deputy Public Defender. Welcome. Realignment has been described as one of the most significant changes to California corrections in decades. For the Public Defender's Office, realignment has presented unique opportunities as well as challenges to the work we do. Prior to realignment, the Public Defender's Office did not represent state parolees. In the beginning, there was a bit of a learning curve to understand how to properly represent this population of clients that our office had never handled before. It was important to determine their unique needs and how to meet them. I'm proud to say our office has been successful in this endeavor and continues to look for ways to serve these clients. In addition, they work closely with the jail, the probation department, and parole to develop resources to help our mutual clients integrate successfully back in the community. What has been learned throughout this process and what continues to be a significant need is housing. If a person has nowhere to lay their head at night, it's difficult to muster the resources necessary to make the life changes that are required to integrate successfully back into the society. Employment opportunities are also a significant need of our clients. Overall, we believe realignment has exciting potential with continued funding, evidence-based practices, and collaboration amongst all the community partners. We really can succeed in reducing recidivism. Hello, I'm Glenda Saunders, the presiding judge of the Orange County Superior Court. As previous speakers have pointed out, each justice partner has been affected differently by the legislation commonly known as AB 109, or Criminal Justice Realignment. Our primary concern was the additional workload we would have to absorb into an already strained, fiscally stretched court. This concern was exacerbated by the fact that we did not have any accurate way of knowing how many petitions for post-release community supervision violations and parole violations would be filed with the court. We therefore had to develop a plan to deal with an additional workload which we had no accurate way of measuring. For example, we did not know how many judges, staff and courtrooms would be needed to handle the additional workload. With collaboration from our many justice partners, and in particular probation, we estimated a numerical range of potential cases. We then developed a plan to accommodate the most likely number, and in a worst case scenario, a contingency plan to deal with the highest estimated workload. The second challenge we faced was the fact that the new legislation resulted in one of the most significant changes in felony sentencing laws in more than a decade. This required judges and staff to learn new laws and procedures. In addition, new sentencing reporting requirements required us to incorporate changes into our case management system. 
All this had to be done with limited time and limited resources, especially given the budget cuts the court has experienced since 2008. We are pleased that in spite of our severely restricted resources, we have developed effective procedures to handle the extra workload and the substantial changes in sentencing laws. In fact, many of the procedures the Orange County Superior Court developed were adopted by courts statewide. Hello, my name is Mary Hale. I'm the Director of Behavioral Health Services for the Orange County Health Care Agency. The health care agency is responsible for the correctional, medical, and behavioral health care in the county jails, along with providing substance abuse and mental health services in the community. Approximately 80% of inmates in Orange County jails have substance abuse or mental health issues. Many of these individuals also have chronic illnesses, such as hepatitis, HIV, diabetes, and hypertension. In order to initiate services for certain chronic conditions, inmates need to be in custody long enough to complete a treatment regime. Prior to AB 109, starting treatment was typically not an option due to shorter lengths of stay. The health care agency has made changes to correctional medical health practices to accommodate these longer lengths of stay. There have actually been a number of positive effects as a result of AB 109. All clients now with current or past behavioral health issues are assessed by our health care professionals and appropriate referrals are made. Our staff are assessing approximately 300 clients per month at probation. We have created a continuum of services that allows clients to access services within a day or two of the request. This is extremely important for clients requiring residential treatment services, which before AB 109 would have taken a month or more. Typically, our mental health services are designated for persons who are severely and persistently mentally ill. We know with AB 109, some clients don't meet that criteria but would benefit from seeing a psychiatrist. Additionally, the healthcare agency contracts with a full service partnership that provides numerous services for clients with mental illness that need intensive services and ancillary support. This full service partnership provides whatever it takes to help those clients. Temporary housing is also available for our severely and persistently mentally ill clients. We are very proud of our efforts and services. Clients are maintaining long terms of sobriety, increased mental stability, and less incarceration once they're engaged with services. The healthcare agency has been able to create a service delivery system that allows for a thorough behavioral health assessment, expedited access to services, good retention rates, increased sobriety, and reduced recidivism. Hi, my name is Quincy Thacker. I'm the Chief Deputy Regional Administrator for the California Department of Corrections Division of Adult Parole Operations. Some of the initial concerns we had with AB 109 was a time frame from the law passing to implementation. This was a relatively short time period and there were concerns about how to implement, operationalize the necessary changes that had to occur in that time frame. For example, setting up a process to refer all post-release supervised parolees to 58 counties. Another impact of AB 109 was on the 58 county court system. I feel proud of the collaboration that we established with the county court systems. We have worked together with the courts to develop the parole revocation process and warrant request procedures. This was a monumental undertaking which required developing new computer programs and establishing the correct standardized forms that all the counties were able to agree upon. Today, there are some positive effects that we are seeing as a result of AB 109. Prior to realignment, more than 60,000 felon parole violators returned to state prison annually with an average length of stay of 90 days. AB 109 has assisted the state in reducing prison overcrowding. In addition, with reduced DAPO parole population, we were able to provide needed resources and referrals to a greater number of parolees. With a reduced population and an increase in program funding, we have an opportunity to reduce recidivism and impact public safety. Thank you for taking the time to explore the community corrections issues presented by Orange County leadership. We are on a path toward lowered recidivism 
Through the application of evidence-based practices, the success of AB 109 and Community Corrections Realignment hinges on productive and effective collaboration among public safety and community-based organizations. To learn more about Orange County's Community Corrections Partnership, please visit the website at ocgov.com forward slash gov forward slash probation forward slash OCCP. Thank you.